What's up? Dennis here, Analog Archives. Alright, today I'm going to be doing a response video. Um, dude is uh, Life Eternal. Did, um, I think he did 10 overrated albums or metal records. Um, yeah, I got around 10. I'm going to try to do stuff I haven't really talked about. I did a video maybe almost two years ago when I first started about um, some overrated albums. So, But I took it down because it's kind of stupid. I didn't like it anyways. Um, but I'm going to try this one. Just a response. Talk about some records that I think some of those are going to be from that. Um, and just to just to talk about certain things, but uh, I just want to say beforehand, I like these records. It's not that I don't like these. It's just that uh, I think they're overrated. Um, for the most part, I like I like them. Um, I don't listen to them that much. Uh, and a lot of them are just disappointments. They're not really things that I have that if I had heard them first, they would probably be okay. But because I was a fan of the band um, before, Beforehand, before these albums came out, or you know, whatever the fucking reason, I'll fucking let you know. Um, I got stories for some of these, so. Uh, but before we get started, we are listening to, and I'm, I don't know how to pronounce this, but Anthares, Anthares from Brazil, uh, late '80s thrash, uh, fucking rips. If you haven't heard this, check it out. If you like old Sepultura. It's not really sound like Sepultura, but, you know, if they're from Brazil, everybody has to say Sepultura, right? Um, but I could see that. Um, but just fucking nasty, dirty fucking thrash, like, you know, you'd want to hear if you like old school thrash. Good stuff. Um, so anyways, I'm in a new spot here. I just decided to sit over here. I'm starting to set up the basement. Um, I got a lot more shelving to do down this way, uh, but I thought, fuck it, this looks like a cool spot to fucking chill. I got these sick-ass vintage chairs I found at a fucking yard sale. A uh, guy gave them to me for free. They're fucking super comfortable from the 60s, I think, um, but they're really nice. All wood underneath, super nice stitching on them. <laughs> Anyways, enough about my vintage chairs. All right, let's get started. Uh, these are all pretty much big bangers. It's not like, that's why I picked them because I, they're overrated, they're good, but I think they're like, all these are gonna be big deal to a lot of people. So yeah, if you have a problem with them, fucking let me know. Uh, first one, uh, Metallica, Master of Puppets. Uh, I saw a couple people do this. I think Steve, uh, Sorry, Steve, I can't remember your channel, but he did a response and he picked this one too. Never got the hype on this one. Um, for one, this album pissed me off, mainly because I was a fan uh, since, well, Ride the Lightning. I can't say I was a fan since Kill Em All because I didn't hear that until after. Um, but I had already heard Kill Em All, obviously, when this came out. Um, was a huge fan of that and Ride the Lightning. This came out, and then all of a sudden, everybody was a Metallica fan. Uh, I don't know what it was. Was it this record? Because it's not that great. Or, or is it just a commercialized record? Because even as a kid, I could never get into it. Um, I like Battery, thing that should not be. Master of Puppets is nah, not for me. Welcome Home Sanitarium is a good song. And then All of Sight 2 is not great. Disposable Heroes, Leper Messiah, Orion, and Damage Incorporated are... Those are filler songs to me. Um, just my opinion. I just don't. They're not. They don't hit me. Um, like I said, I like the record. I can listen to those songs. Don't get me wrong. Um, it's just they're not that great. They're just okay. And coming from Metallica after Rise of the Lightning, my expectations were up here. This came out and I was like, something's off. Something's not right. Um, then they toured with Ozzy. I think during this record, and they just blew up. Um, then everybody at school was wearing fucking Metallica shirts. All the people that told me Metallica sucked 
were now wearing Metallica shirts. But they still listened to fucking Rat and Scorpions and that shit, which is fine, but I was already into Slayer and fucking Megadeth and Exodus and all that shit, so I was like, fuck off, you bunch of fucking posers, man. You guys fucking hated this band. Then they toured with Ozzy and all of a sudden they're the fucking greatest metal band. I mean, same thing goes for fucking Ant Justice. Ant Justice, I was just like taking a look at it. A lot of the songs mimic Master as far as, and I don't know if that was on purpose, but just with the fast song at the beginning and then the title track song and then the fucking uh, ballad type song. Yeah, it almost mimics this album. Then the instrumental, then the, the fast song at the end, like Damage Incorporated, Dyer's Eve. It's kind of weird, but uh, I don't know. Maybe that was on purpose, or maybe they just ran out of ideas already. Are they coming up with their style? I get it. Like, they were trying to find a commercial style that wasn't commercial, I guess. So, they, do, they were trying to do, like, a, a light thrash, I guess. I don't know. But anyways, on to the next one. Talked about that too long. Iron Maiden, Somewhere in Time. Another record I got, and I was like, man, Power Slave was so good. And then this comes out, and it's, I don't know, man. It's like a, another commercialized record. And when did this come out? 86? 87? Somewhere around there, I want to say. Um, again, it's just... There was too too many good things coming out for this to be this kind of record. Yeah, I like some of the songs. Caught somewhere in time, wasted years. I mean, I like the whole record. Don't get me wrong. It's just some of the songs are just, uh, this, especially like fucking what's a song on here? Sea of Madness. Uh, that's bad. It's not a good song. I don't know, man. It's just this record's just not doing it for me as far as like classic Maiden. I think. After Power Slave, for me, Iron Maiden was whatever. They're going to be good records, but nothing's going to be the first ones up to Power Slave. That's kind of where Iron Maiden's legacy ended for me. Not to say I don't like the other records, because I do. It's just they progressively got farther away from what I liked about the band, I guess. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, Somewhere in Time, not for me. It's a good album. I'll listen to it once in a great while. It's got some good songs on it. Uh, up next, uh, I did this one in the first video, um, Slayer, Seasons of the Abyss, uh, sorry about the glare, man, these shop lights are fuck, fucking killing me, man, um, I'll try to fix this shit in the future, put in some new lighting in here, um, but for now, deal, uh, again, this is when... When this come out? 90? 89? Somewhere around there. Um, I really liked this album when it came out. But it wore... It did not age well. It, it, the older it got, the worse it got for me, I guess. I still like a lot of songs. I mean, like I like that record, but like Spirit in Black's a really good song. Uh, Board of Fire... If I can never hear a war ensemble again, that'll be great. Uh, not the best song. Again, it, I just heard it so many times. It's like, yeah, war ensemble. We get it, dude. Um, you gotta start every show off with fucking war ensemble for like three years. Uh, it just, it's a good record. Um, it's got some great songs on it, and then it's got like fucking not so great songs. Like, uh, you know, the fucking gang song I've already talked about on the ten songs on great albums. Expendable Youth. Not a good song. And that's where I liked South of Heaven. I really liked South of Heaven, but that's because I think at the time when I was listening to South of Heaven, I was really in getting into Black Sabbath at the time. Um, their discography. And so that album really hit. Like, man, this is Sabbath influenced. I really like it. I just think it's an overrated record, um, and I get that it's a lot of people's first experience with Slayer, so, and it's, it's, in, I mean, Dead Skin Mask, that kind of stuff, it's in, it's accessible, I guess. Um, Seasons in the Abyss was almost a ballad, it had an MTV video, I just think it's like, kind of like Metallica, they're just trying to find where they fit in 
where they can be successful and still be heavy, um, if that makes sense. Tom Moran's vocals, he never got out of that weird South of Heaven singing style with the with the Rain and Blood mix, um, which is fine. I can deal with it, but that's that was the whole start of the whole Tom Moran shouting, where he started shouting his vocals, um, which I feel like I just don't like. Um, again, the probably the last record um, that I really loved from Slayer was South of Heaven, and then this came out, and I, I did like it when it first came out, but it just hasn't aged well for me. And um, it is what it is. I, it's a good record. It's just overrated. Overrated. People put it at the top of their list, like best Slayer album ever. And I'm like, have you fucking heard Hello Waits? Um, Show No Mercy? Fuck, man. Those albums are... They were pioneers of their fucking genre um, on those records. And this album came out, and it's just like, yeah, okay, well, they can mix Rain and Blood with fucking... with South of Heaven, and... I don't know. But they, they stuck with that style, and they've stuck with that style since. And, I mean, it's made them a great band, I guess, for a lot of people. For me, I just like their raw, evil, fucking satanic stuff. But that's just me! Uh, fuck it. Alright, up next, here comes a big band. Um... Black Sabbath Volume 4. Man, this record, it just never did anything for me. Um, it's got some great songs on it. Um, Under the Sun, Cornucopia, Supernaut. But then it, it's just got, like, changes. And it just, I don't know, man. This not a great album. And I always see people put this, like, in the top, like, either the top Black Sabbath record or the top four, top three. And I'm like, no way. <laughs> No way, man. Not for me. This would be way down past even the Dio stuff. Um, so, yeah. Uh, volume 4. Not for me. Uh, this is a Korean press. That's why it's brown. Um, but I don't know where my original is. It's somewhere in the fucking archives over there. But Yeah, that Black Sabbath album just never did anything for me. Like I said, it's got some of those classic songs on it, kind of like the Slayer, but then it's just got songs I just don't want to hear. I'll skip over. Um, up next, here's a band. This is going to be the only CD here. By the way, these are all OG presses except for this. This is a bootleg um, because the fucking original is expensive. And this is Morbid Saint, Spectrum of Death. Great record, great thrash record. Um, I did not do my research, but I believe this came out in like 90, early 90s. Um, I want to say like 91, 92, somewhere around there. So again, uh, this was on Grindcore. It was on Metallica. I can't remember the original la label. Met Metallica something. Uh, Mexican label, originally. Um, for this record... This one is a great record, and I like it. It's just it's just a generic thrash record, though. Um, and I always see people putting this at the top of their list, and I get it. It's like younger kids, and they're like, yeah, that Morbid Saint's like the best thrash metal record ever released. And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, dude? That thing came out, like, way late. They just ripped off a bunch of ideas from other bands, and... It's a good re record, don't get me wrong, it's just not the best thrash metal record. And it's, it, This is a case where I always said, underrated bands become overrated. So this was an underrated record at first, but then all these people got into it, which seemed like all at once because of the hype, hype train that went around when this mid-2000s or so, when this got super big and super popular. And when everybody was like, listening to Retro Thrash, or on Retro Thrash, it was probably like, yeah, 2010, 2008, somewhere around there, somewhere between 2005 and 2010, and this album became huge in the underground, um, everybody was like talking about it, and I was like, yeah, it's a cool record, um, but, and I didn't even own it, um, because I would never buy that record with that cover on it, um, 
just because there were so many other records to buy, and this was on Grindcore, so you never knew what you were going to get when you bought that shit. Um, so I was like, yeah, it looks like thrash, dude. I'm not buying that. Well, lo and behold, it was thrash. Um, so I wouldn't have liked it anyways if I had bought this in the 90s, early 90s, because I was all I listened to was death metal. So I would have been pissed. Um, but I remember at Camelot Records just sitting there on cassette forever, and I believe the cassette just sold for like 140 bucks. so... Yeah, should have bought it. Oh well. Um, you know, you can't win them all. I would have loved to have an original copy of this, but like I said back then, I wouldn't have been into it because I would have just been like, fucking thrash, dude. I don't listen to that shit. Yeah. Just, you know, dumb kids. Um, up next, here's one that really disappointed me when I was young um, Creator, Terrible Certainty. Man, I loved Pleasure to Kill so much. It was one of my favorite records. Um, uh, the EP, fucking Flag of Hate. Uh, the first record, fucking love that. Um, not as much as the EP and Pleasure to Kill. Um, but, yeah, dude. This came out, and they just completely changed their style. And I was like, what? What is this? Betrayer. And then it's like, dee, 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 dee. And like... I'm like, what is this shit? Like, this isn't Creator. This sounds like fucking Testament or something. Like, they just changed to this kind of Bay Area style. This crunchy, uh, light riffing type of... I don't know. I don't know. I just didn't like it. I still don't care for it. I've tried and tried with this record. And again, it's overrated. I see people always say this is like the best Creator record. I'm like, what? Dude. Okay. I mean... To each his own, I guess, but uh, to me, no. I just don't care for this. It's okay. I can listen to it once in a while. I just think it's overrated. Just like with all these, I'll listen to them once in a while, um, but it's not something I, I reach for when I want to listen to Creator. Um, not a big fan of Extreme Aggressions either. That's okay. Um, I liked Coma Souls a, a lot better. I haven't listened to that in a minute. I'll probably have to check that out again. But I really remember liking Coma of Souls. Like, yeah, this is, sounds better than the last two records. Um, I liked the remaster of Extreme Aggression. It sounded better than the original um, mix on it. So that, that's a lot of problem with these things too. Is like, and I'll get into like production stuff with some of these as well. Um, but yeah, Creator Terrible Certainty, overrated for me. Um, I kind of talked about this one. Well, mainly I talked about it in the first video I did. Um, At the Gates, Slaughter of the Soul. And just, oh, this is a huge overrated record. Um, this is one of those records I can listen to. Um, like I could listen to a couple songs off of it. it, it all the songs sound the same to me. Um, there's not one thing I'm like, I can pick out and be like, oh, I love this song. They're just, they're just all blend together for me. I don't know why. Um, and I love Red in the Sky and Gardens of Grief. And I'm not a big fan of like Terminal Spirit or uh, With Fear I Kiss, The Burning Darkness, Burning Sun, Burning Sun. Um, not a big fan of those ones either. Uh, they kind of died for me um, with Red in the Sky. I can listen to the other stuff, but I don't. Gardens of Grief is my favorite, um, then Red in the Sky. But I remember this was huge when it came out huge um they played with dissection and carcass um i went for dissection but yeah i don't even remember them playing honestly i do have the uh, vhs of that show that i was at um to check it out but yeah that that record for me and then and then it became like this huge thing all the hardcore bands wanted to sound like at the gates they were like a huge influence i guess because of the groove um, I mean, there were so, some hardcore bands that just sounded exactly like them. I know, like, bands like Bleeding Through, and I can't remember all the names of those, like, 90s, early 2000 bands, but there were just, uh, there's one band I just can't remember the name of, Darkness, Dark, Fuck. I can't remember the name of that band, but they sound just like At The Gates, but they're a hardcore band. But all the hardcore kids were into that, um... Which is fine. I get it. I just don't get the hype on that record. It's just cool. I like a few. Like I can listen to the record, but to be nothing stands out on that record. It just sounds the same. 
Um, and that's just my opinion. Overrated for sure, in my opinion. Uh, up next, here's one again I never liked. I mean, I, I, I keep saying I never liked, but uh, I want to say I just never got the DSI Legion. Always, this one just, after the first record, this came out and it sounded... I kind of listened to it again recently. I mean, I listened to this once in a while. It's a, it's a good record. It's just... And it has a couple good... Like, Dead But Dreaming, I think, is a good song on here. It's got some really good songs. But it has this weird production. Um, it's kind of muddy, and the drums are super high in the mix. And it sounds very... Um, almost industrial sounding. I don't kind of reminds me of Fear Factory or something. Where the double bass is like... I don't know if it's like a, it's triggered or something. I don't know what it is. It just sounds electric, electric to me, electronic. And the guitars are low in the mix, and Benton's vocals are high. It's just I want to hear. I wanted to hear like thick, sick ass vocal or uh, guitar in the mix, and I just could barely hear the guitar. Um, and it's all drums and vocals, and it's just. I don't know. I just don't like the mix on this. I think if the mix was better, um, I'd like the album more. I think the song structures are pretty good on this. <clears throat> it, no way. The debut still destroys it. Um, I think then they came back and with the next record. I can't remember the name of it. Serpents of the Light or something. It's not Serpents of the Light. Whatever. The next one with the fucking Jesus on the front. Uh, and they, the production was a lot better. Um, they remedied it, but I still think with that production on this album, it would be better than that last album. Um, yeah, fuck it. DSI Legion, great record, overrated in my opinion. The reason I'm saying a lot of these are overrated um, is because I see them at the top of people's lists, like best death metal, and they'll pick this over the debut, uh, which is really surprising to me. Um, and again, I don't know why. It could be just because they heard this one first. A lot of times people hear things first and it changes. That's, that's their perception of what the band should sound like. And I get it because the first one, very thrashy, very Dark Angel inspired. Um, but that's what I love about it. Um, but this one, yeah, overrated for me, but I still like it. Um, same thing with this one. Uh, Dismember, Massive Killing Capacity. Um... Fucking production on this is fucking amazing, dude. Very fucking heavy. Um, it's just groovy. It's too groovy for me. Um, I like like uh, crime. What's the name of that song? I can't read this shit. But uh, like the fourth song in sounds all like our uh, War Dead. War Dead. That's a badass song. Um, there's kind of like a new wave of British heavy metal feel on a couple of these tracks, and you can even tell the band was changing. This was during when Wolverine Blues was super popular, and um, they were trying to come up with a, a style where they thought they would kind of mix some groove elements in with their death metal. Of course, it didn't work. They went right back to death metal after this with their album Death Metal. <laughs> They're like, fuck it, we're death metal now. Listen to us. Uh, but yeah, this one, it just I just always think it's overrated. A lot of people are just like, oh, best fucking death metal album ever. And I'm like, what? Come on, man. No way. Not even close. Have you even heard like an ever-flowing stream? I mean, not that that's the best death metal album ever, but um, it's up there in my top ten for sure. Um, but this one, yeah, they tried something. And like I said, it's okay. I'll jam this every once in a while. I love the production on it. Um, Casket Garden. Yeah, it's, it's like you can just groove out to it. It's just that... I just think it's overrated by people. Um, this one, man, this one's super overrated. Um, Incantation, Onward to Golgotha. My God, man, people worship this fucking record. Oh, it's a good record, but the production sounds like shit. It sounds like it was recorded in a fucking basement with a fucking Walkman. I mean, and maybe that's what people want to hear, but I can't even hear the fucking guitars. I can't hear any rhythms. Um, all I hear is fucking drums, like, blasting through the guitars. And I love the fucking 7 inches and the demo. And then this came out, and I'm like, what the fuck happened? Like, 
those fucking seven inches are fucking amazing, man. And then this came out, and I was so pumped to buy it. And then I was like, man, this is something wrong with my cassette? It sounds garbled. Um, but, you know, they got what they got for their production. I'm sure they weren't happy with it. Um, but people like it uh, because people think it's cult. Oh, man, got that fucking garbled production. Sounds so bad. I love it. Okay, um, I'm sure that's what they they were not going for that um, at the time. Uh, but anyways, it's a it's a great album as far as like the songs go. A lot of these songs, "Devoured to Death" and stuff, are like from the old uh, Seven Inches, so they just don't come across that great. When I saw them live on this tour, they just just a wall of noise, man. Um, hate to say it, just. Me and my friend were just like, we'll go see Incantation, go to sleep, because we can't see, we can't tell what the fuck they're playing. Um, and maybe that was just a bad show, but I don't know, man. I think I've seen them a couple of times, and uh, maybe I just been there and they had bad sound. But um, and don't get me wrong, I like Incantation. I like pretty much all their records. Um, it's just this one in particular, I think, is super overrated, super hyped. Everybody loves this. Uh, bands try to sound like this uh, Dead Congregation so many bands try to sound like this record it's fucking mind boggling um, but again their production isn't like this <laughs> um, but yeah um, I like this record it's overrated um, but I can jam it out once in a while not something I want to play when I'm fucking tired alright up next we have another one I see on people's lists all the time. Um, Amorphous Tales of a Thousand Lakes. No. Uh, not for me. Uh, this is super keyboard heavy. All the songs are kind of goofy. Um, just like... Too... Uh, what's the word I want to use? I don't know. It's too folky for me. And it's too... Like coming from the Carillion Isthmus, which I love that record... And I obviously like uh, Dismant and, um, what's that album called? Dismant Horror or something? Dismant of Soul. Um, I like that. And then obviously the Abhorrent stuff before Amorphous. Fucking godly shit. But then, this came out. I got a keyboard player, and this guy just fucking takes over, dude. He's like, It's like, what the fuck, dude? Shut the fuck up, dude. I don't want to hear all this keyboard all over the place, and it's all like pan flute keyboard. It's not like it's not like uh, Nocturnus keyboards where it's part of the music. It's just like, and it's like, uh, it's, I don't want to hear it in my death metal, man. Vocals on this are sick, by the way, um, but the music, eh, not like Old Amorphous. If you like Old Amorphous, I'd stay away from this. I'm sure you already heard this, but. I would see this one hyped up, people always like showing it, like, oh, my favorite Amorphous record. Like, Alright, well, I guess. And then, you know, I'll go into the story where I saw Amorphous on this tour, um, and I wanted to hear Karelian Isthmus, and every song they played from that had keyboards in it all of a sudden. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, they'd play the old songs and then be like, I'm like, no, dude, get... And the guy was, like, up front, like, just jamming out on the keyboard. It was, like, super high in the mix, and I'm like, wow, he just fucking ruined the show, dude. Great job. Um, but anyways, up next, I've talked about this probably. Um, talked about this on another video, but uh, Anthrax, Among the Living... Everybody always says it's their best record. For me, it's Fistful of Metal. Um, that, that album's fucking awesome. Underrated record. Um, I like Spreading the Disease, too. Don't get me wrong, this album's okay. I can listen to this. I used to listen to this when it first came out, and I thought it was good. I liked the riffs on it. Um, but I had friends that didn't like it. Even when it came out, they were like, Oh, fuck that Belladonna, dude. Fuck his vocals. I was like, nah, it's alright. Because um, I like the riffs a lot, because they were they sounded like S.O.D. Which, you know, later I found out that Scott Ian had actually taken the S.O.D. riffs. 
and used them on this record when he told Billy Milano he wasn't going to use them, um, and then he did. So he was basically scared he was going to get his ass kicked every time he saw Billy Milano um, because he used the riffs. I mean, Scott Ian wrote the riffs, but, you know, you just don't tell somebody you're going to fucking not use them and then you use them on the record. So that's pretty fucked up. I mean, Scott Ian did go on to do some riffs for the M.O.D. record, give him some riffs and produce it. Or, um, so, I mean, he did, you know, end up coming around and helping him out, but... You know, you could totally hear the, the S.O.D. shit on here, which I really liked. It's just, um, I just don't think it's their best album. I think it's overrated. I think it's got some good songs. Some of the songs, like Indians, don't really hold up anymore. Um, Cotton Omosh is not a great song. Uh, NFL, not a great song. But, I mean, and you know, it's got some good riffs here and there, and I like the record. I'll definitely can listen to it. I just don't think... I don't think they deserve to be in the big four myself. Um, I mean, they're in the big four because of this record. It's not because of Fistful of Metal. Um, I mean, they play this record like in full. Uh, all the time. So, it is what it is. It's it's an okay record. I just think it's really overrated. I like um, Persistence of Time. I like that one a little bit better than this. I think the song structures are better. Um... But it's, a, it's an okay record, like I said. Um, anyways, I'm past 10, but plug it. Uh, last one on the list. Another huge disappointment. And again, not a bad record. It's a good record. Um, atheist. Piece of time. Um, I was so stoked when this came out. Huge Ravage fan. If you guys just don't know who Ravage is, it was pre-atheist. Um, they had a demo... Um, from 85, it's total death thrash, fucking badass, super good, and then they had the, uh, their demo from 87, um, God, I forgot the name of the demo, On They Slay, On They Slay, I think is the name of the demo from 87, um, and then there's two songs off of Comp, which, uh, Ravage put on there, and if, go listen to that. 87 demo and then listen to this and you'll know why I was disappointed man those are some brutal fucking death metal songs like really heavy shit um, so I was so stoked when this record came out and then it's like a tech death record their least tech death record but just not for me um, super disappointed I'll listen to it once in a while like I said I think it's a great record and, uh, you know, anytime you see anything about Atheist, all they do is talk about the musicianship. Oh, the fucking bass playing is amazing. And listen to the drums. And who cares, man? It's all about the music. It's not about technical shit. That's not what death metal's about. Death metal's about songs and song structures. Um, if you're going to be technical, I guess, great. I just, I'm not, I don't listen to death metal for technical death metal. It's just not my thing. Um, never has been. Um, I think it ruins the whole point of death metal. Um, that's kind of like the whole reason why I would listen to death metal is because thrash metal got too technical and too too weak. And I think that's what happened to death metal. They got too many bands, too many egos, and that's why black metal took over um, in the 90s. Um, but anyways, <laughs> that's, another, that's another video. Um, anyways, that's it. Go check out Life Eternal. Um, cool thread. You know, I always like to talk shit about stuff. It's not always shit, but I mean, you know, all these records are good. So I don't want to hear, fuck you, dude, this, this album fucking rules. Yeah, dude, I'm saying it's a good record. It's just overrated. Um, not a terrible record like my terrible record videos. Um, video. Um, it's just, these are overrated for me, and I don't listen to them that much um, because of that. But anyways, I'll talk to you guys later. I have a video. I've been working on a video for, um, not working on it, but listening to a lot of stuff for my second tier death metal. Um, there's so many bands. It's, i got to break it down like it, to a small group or semi-small group of records so I can talk about them. So I'm not on here for an hour talking about fucking second tier death metal. Um, but, 
you know, tell me what you guys want to see. You know, I had a lot of requests. I got a lot of people subscribing to the channel. A lot of people that talk to me offline about stuff, and um, which is super cool. Um, you guys keep talking to me. Definitely, I'll always respond. You know, I always respond to you guys. Um, in the comments, uh, hit me up on Instagram, Analog Archives on Instagram. Um, you know, I'm always willing to talk metal all the time. Uh, I do have to work a lot, so I'm not always available to do live streams and shit like that. I wish I could. Um, but, you know, maybe I'll do some live streams here. Um, I was talking to somebody on um, Instagram uh, about maybe doing some live streams where you guys get on there and just fucking interact and ask me questions or we'll talk about fucking something. Who knows? Um, we'll figure something out. Um, I do have the second tier uh, death metal coming up. Um, I got one with Sector on uh, Top 10 Crossover. So that's in the works. So we got shit coming up. Um, it's just, you know, finding the time to do this shit. I figured today was the day I fucking have a little bit of time before work. Fuck it. Let's do it. All right, well, I've been on here for way too long. Um, peace out. Thanks for watching.